Hello everyone, welcome to Armus. This is part two of five survival firearms for the apocalypse. Now today we are featuring the Mossberg 590 shockwave in 12 gauge. So disclaimer right off the bat, this is all in fun and all based on my biased opinions. Now let me safety check really, really quick. So nothing in the receiver and nothing in the magazine. So let me orient the firearm in this direction that way we can cover some specs. So the barrel is 14 inches long, and that's 14.375 inches long. It is a heavy wall barrel, so this is a 590 in design, and it is a cylinder bore, meaning there are no choke tubes in here. Now for front sight, we do have a front bead brass sight, and it is also sporting the Raptor grip here. And this is really nice for absorbing some of the sharp recoil, especially from the, from the slugs. Now the front forend is a corn cob style front forend and it comes with a strap which comes in handy and it's a nice safety feature because once your hands get sweaty uh, after sharp recoil your hand wants to actually shoot forward and in front of the barrel so that's this is pretty nice that it comes with this. Now the firearm is five pounds and that's actually 5.25 pounds. Capacity with uh, two and three quarter shells is five plus one in the chamber. But with these mini shells, and this is a slug right here, the Aguila or Aguila mini shells. And this is the buckshot. So these are super tiny. Now with these, you do have the capacity of eight plus one in the chamber. So that's pretty significant. So one of the shortcomings with uh, Shockwave, a lot of people, um, talk about it as really more of a novelty and maybe more of a gimmick gun if if i can use that word to describe it uh many people don't think that it's it's very useful for home defense or uh defensive measures right um and part of the reason is as you can see this 14 inch barrel offers a very short sight radius and there's actually nothing that you can brace on this right and uh, so it doesn't come with a brace. It, it actually is, is uh, a Raptor grip and it's really, really nice. It does absorb recoil, but to anchor it or index it in your body so you can shoot, it's very difficult. I actually found that it was easier for me to uh, put it right in front of my uh, face here and uh, really hold it tight. So I'm pushing out this way and I'm holding tight this way. So it's a push and pull action and it worked pretty nicely but you do have to acquire that skill in order to become proficient in that. Um, but how did it fare as a survival uh, firearm for the apocalypse? Well, that's what we're gonna have to go over. Now, what are some of the things that it did bring to the table? So some of the things that it did bring was uh, portability. So this is a very portable firearm. And especially if you're out there uh, I'm not an expert, but I am a hunter. And once you're trekking out in the field and you're carrying your equipment, plus you're carrying your, your firearm, your rifle, your shotgun, whatever you're carrying, uh, things get pretty heavy and cumbersome. But with something wieldy like this, uh, that makes it a little bit better and easier on the person to carry. So it brings portability and it also brings versatility. Now, with some of the other models, obviously, you can modify and you can add different braces and, and, and different things like barrel lengths and um, it's also drilled and tapped for sights and stuff like that. But with this one here, I wouldn't modify much because of the classification, okay? But it does bring a lot of great things to the table as well, aside from its shortcomings. Now, are those shortcomings a deal breaker? No, not really, because uh, some people can actually uh, dedicate their time and training to become proficient and develop the skill sets that's required to make this an effective and useful tool for, for defense. So once you get a hang of it, it, it becomes a little more intuitive, not initially, but you can get better at uh, and, and, and utilizing this tool as a defensive firearm. 
So some of the other items I was using is this Opsil Mini Clip, and it's a 2.0 Flex, as you can see there, made in Texas. And this came in very handy because with this one, I was utilizing the mini shells, and this is the slug version, and these are the buckshots. And I ran 25 of these in total, actually probably about 21 of these, and maybe about four or five of these uh, buckshots, and it ran flawless. There was no hiccups, there was no problem cycling, ejecting, firing, nothing like that. So it really, really did well. So reliability is a big plus with this firearm. Uh, now, what happened is you can see during the range time, I had to adjust my picture because I was looking at it at an incline all the way up to the bead and it was shooting actually high into the left for me. But once I acquired a good shot uh, picture and, and I used it more like this where you can just see the bead right over the receiver, that's the way it worked perfectly. And I got some great shots. I was initially using it like this, but no, it has to be used at least for me in, in this manner. So this was my side picture and it worked perfectly. Um, so I was very impressed and uh, initially it wasn't intuitive. Uh, it was difficult and I was thinking, wow, th this is really hard to use. But as time went on and through persistence and, and a little bit of training, uh, I was able to get a better uh, skill set in using this and I'm pretty sure there are people that can use it very, very proficiently. So I think it, it can be a useful tool for defense. So the question is, how did the Shockwave do as a survival firearm for the apocalypse? And actually, it did better than I thought it was. So let's uh, retrieve some of the data that I gathered from the table chart. Uh, the first category is ergonomics. Now for ergonomics, I did give it a three. And the only reason I didn't give it a four was it because it didn't come with some kind of a, a brace or stock that you can actually shoulder. So it, it's a skill you have to acquire. And for me, I had to actually pull forward on the forehand and pull back on, on the grip here. And I was able to stabilize it, bring it up to my line of sights and actually fire. And after some time, I did get pretty proficient and I was able to acquire a good sight picture and get some accuracy. But you'll see it on the range time that initially it was a challenge. Now, what I do like about the ergonomics that makes it very useful is it has a top tang safety. So that's not only good for right-handed shooters, but also for left-handed. The action uh, slide release is actually down here. So unlike the 870s that you have to actually uh, break your grip and, and uh, actuate it here. This one you really don't have to. You just hold it here and it, you can actually, um, it'll release the action. So that's really nice. So these two are very ergonomic. Now I am an 870 person just for the record and I love the way the 870 set up as well and I like the feel of it too. But the 590, I was pretty impressed with it. Now the ergonomics are really good and I love a pump action. Other things just to mention, I also like that um, uh, it doesn't have a loading gate, even though I've never had a problems with the 870s in the loading gate, but I just dropped them in and I would slide them forward. I also like that it has two extractors in there and that makes a little more secure or actually makes me feel more secure that it has two extractors in there. And just in case uh, anything swells up in there, you could actually uh, pull on it uh, sharply to the back and guess what? It'll extract it. Now, I did use the mini clip and that was a 2.0 Opsil Flex. And I used the mini shells and like I said, I had no problems, no hiccups, nothing. It functioned very reliably. So I was very impressed with that. So ergonomics, it received a three. Had it had a brace, it would have gotten a four but it did receive a three. Now accuracy, I also gave it a three because initially, as you can see on range time, on the footage, I was having problems. And part of the reason is I was using, let me see if I can 
show you here in the camera, I was using this type of side picture. So it was at an incline. But what I found out later was actually I had to have this side picture here. So right over the receiver, if I lined up the bead and I aligned it really well right in the center, it worked perfectly. And I, I and that that was a ticket. So I was using it kind of like that, like I would use my shotgun for upland uh, hunting, dove hunting. But actually this one works perfectly just like that. And you can see the difference on the second string of, uh, of rapid fire. So uh, three for ergonomics, three for accuracy. Now follow up shots, that was difficult. And that does require some training. This was the second time that I have used this firearm. The first time at the range and I was just taking my time. And it, this is a very precise tool or precision tool for accuracy. Yes, it can be very accurate, but you do need a special skill set to use it. Now, follow-up shots, I gave it a two, which is fair because you do, uh, most people require probably some time at the range, maybe a lot of training before you're, you actually get proficient in using this firearm as a great defensive tool. So that's the reason I gave it a tool, at least in my hands, it, it requires some skill set. But can it be done? Yes, it is. It is a very useful tool. Now, penetration, I gave it a four, and you can see some of the footage. Uh, it did really well on the water jugs. It actually, it skewed off to the side, but it went through four very easily. It also did very well on, on the hard barrier test, and it, it broke the cinder block fairly easy. And as I picked it up, you can see that it broke into pieces. So um, you can use even your standard uh, two or three quarter slugs. You can use the, the three inch slugs, which I wouldn't recommend um, because it is a very stout load. But these, they're pretty powerful. So this can probably take care of most things. So for penetration, it received a four. For energy, it received a four. Now capacity... With two and three quarters, it is five plus one in the chamber, which is, that would have been fair. But with these mini shells, uh, it takes eight plus one in the chamber, and that is nine in total. So that's pretty significant. That is pretty cool. So for capacity, I did give it a three. Now for reliability, I gave it a four. And this one with it, like I said, I mentioned with the Opsil, uh, I had no issues at all. Very reliable uh, firearm. And I can't call it a shotgun, right? So I'm calling it a firearm, but it's a shotgun platform, but very reliable. So I gave it a four for reliability. Now versatility, I also gave it a four. Now for this particular model, um, I wouldn't modify it because of the designation. But if you have your standard 590, or your standard five, uh, 500, you can modify it any way you want, increase the barrel length, uh, you can get different uh, stock or brace options, um, and you can still do a few things like uh, carry your, your, and I think they call them the side saddle where you put the ammo here in the side, I can't think of it right now, but uh, you have different options that you can still add to this one here, but I would modify it, like I said, because of the designation. So versatility, it did receive a four and overall it received a 27. So it actually did better than I thought it was. And initially I was just using the shockwave because I thought it would be a little more fun and interesting than using my 870 Tactical Express or my 870 Super Magnum, uh, the one I use for, for hunting or upland uh, dove. But nonetheless, I was pleasantly surprised that you can acquire a skill set through persistence and dedication and use this effectively as a tool for self-defense. And I would say that that merits this firearm as having great potential for a survival firearm uh, for the apocalypse, especially in the hands of somebody who, who can be pretty proficient in using it. So for those interested, uh, I will be using my Wheeler Engineering 
professional trigger gauge so we can test uh, the trigger pull weight on this firearm. So remember, it's all clear and nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine. So totally, totally clear. So, and I'm pointing it in the direction towards my backyard and we have a ditch with uh, high berms. So it's pretty safe and no one's back there. Okay, so I'm gonna do uh, three pulls and we'll test the weight really quick for you. So here goes the first one. So pulling back consistently. And that broke it five pounds and it was 10 ounces. So let's try another group. And that is five pounds, 12 ounces. And let's just do one more. And we'll get you the average. And that's a pretty good one. That is five pounds, 9.2, or actually, yes, 9.2 ounces. So that's a good one. So average is, five pounds, 10.6 ounces, and that was a total of three groups. And you can see there on your right, and that's five pounds, 10.6 ounces, and the amount of trigger pulls was three. So that was the grouping. So not too bad, that's actually pretty good for a shotgun. So now before I forget, uh, one of the items that I was using that I forgot to mention. So this is a Voodoo Tactical Shotgun Scabbard that I used and this came in really handy, especially that after I did that string of eight shots when I was addressing the cryptic targets there at the burn pit, uh, the barrel got really, really hot. So when I would grab the barrel this way, it was extremely hot. So carrying it is something like this, like a scabbard is really, really handy. One, because it frees your hands. Two, because uh, if it's really, really hot, you just stick it in here and you can carry it on your back and you have your hands free to do other tasks if you like. So once again, this is the Voodoo Tactical and that's a shotgun scabbard, okay? One of the things that makes this firearm so versatile is that it can take different types of ammunition. Now this is your mini shell with a rifle slug and it can take mini shells, your standard two and three quarter shells and your three inch magnums. Now, before I go on, I am gonna give a disclaimer. Now I am not advocating in any way that this firearm be used for hunting or harvesting of any of the game that I'm talking about. So if, if you're gonna hunt, of course, you obviously have to do research and look up your state laws and your local laws to see uh, what type of firearm you can use and ammunition for hunting. So with that being said, this is only a make-believe, uh, only a simulation that if you had this firearm in a grid down scenario, could you use this firearm for harvesting game? And the answer is in that type of scenario, yes, you could. Now, people have successfully used rifle slugs to hunt deer sized game. Now, I wouldn't use this with my skill set past 50 yards because of the short sight radius and the lack of brace, but can it be used under 50 yards to harvest deer sized game, elk, moose in a pinch, or defend yourself from four legged critters like bears? Yes, it can. Now, another option in a grid down scenario you could use, uh, this is buckshot, but they also, I think they sell, I think all the way up to eight shot. And you can use, depending on the size, you can use it to hunt dove at very close ranges, duck or geese, and depending on the size of shot. So in a pinch, you could use this firearm <clears throat> to harvest game. So that is one of the things that makes this uh, very versatile. Now, would this be your first choice? No, if you have your standard size shotgun, obviously that would be our first choice. 
but could this be used in a pinch if this is all you have? Yes, and actually it makes a very versatile, portable, and handy little tool. So one of the main reasons that people consider a shotgun as a critical component to their inventory for a survival situation or apocalyptic event is versatility. So I'm gonna go down the list and explain what each one is. And this is a variety of ammo for hunting. So we'll start over here to our right. This is Remington Sure Shot Heavy Dove, as you can see here. And this is eight shot. So this is one of the smallest shot size that you can get. And you can see there that the brass is not really that high. So that's low brass. And part of the reason is the payload is not as heavy. Moving on, this is slightly a little bit larger and this is for federal game load and this is seven and a half shot and you can use this for whale you can also use these for rabbit now going down the list this is the black cloud and in comparison to the dove shot you can tell that the brass is much higher so this is high brass and it has a much heavier payload so this will recoil very sharply now here on the top, these are old cartridges that I still have, or shot shells. These are from Remington. They're high brass, high velocity, also for waterfowl, and these kick tremendously. That is very high brass. And I just kept a few from, ooh, back in the day. And this here also, we have waterfowl, and these are Speed Shock from Ferro, as you can see there. So just another uh, variation. Of waterfowl ammo. Now we're moving along to the front area and here in the front area we do have Winchester Rack Master and these are slugs that are made for uh, deer hunting and I've never used a shotgun to harvest big game. I, I am a upland hunter or dove hunter and I have uh, harvested waterfowl and, and uh, crane but I've never I've never taken big game like deer or hog sized uh, game with uh, slugs. Now I have tried it out and they're actually very accurate. And here on this other side, we also have the Winchester Razorback and these are designed for hog hunting. And here in Texas, we have, um, we have problems with, uh, with feral hogs. So these are perfect for that up close and personal. And these here, they're uh, 12 gauge double F buckshot, also high brass. And this can be used for deer, harvesting of deer, or it can be also used for defense. So as you can see, this is a very versatile um, it, it, we have a variety of ammunition and uh, the shotgun is a very versatile and useful tool. Uh, which can be used for survival, for defense, and it could also be used to harvest anything from big game or defense of big game down to uh, upland bird, uh, waterfowl, uh, geese, or duck. Another noteworthy bit of information uh, that adds prowess to the shotgun as a defensive firearm is that many professional guides and Alaskan park rangers have used some variation of rifle slug or Bernanke slug to stop a charging brown bear. Now we all know that Alaska has some of the biggest brown bears or predators that walk the planet. And yet these park rangers use the shotgun in 12 gauge as their primary source of defense against these uh, large four-legged critters. Now, they have used it with a lot of success to stop nuisance brown bear and man-eating brown bear. So that is why I think it's a critical component uh, to have a shotgun as one of our five survival firearms for the apocalypse. And in this case, we're featuring the Mossberg Shockwave. Shockwave, and we're gonna go ahead and load it now. <laughs> 
just to make sure. And we're totally empty there. Nothing in the chamber. So we're gonna load six rounds of the mini uh, Gila shot shells and it's got the opsil in here. So we're gonna load, there's one, two, three, four, five, and this is the last one and just to show you there, so this is the slug, the mini from a gila. And that's six, nothing in the chamber yet. <laughs> Go when you're ready. Go. So these were the first precision shots here, and there's three in here, and these were rapid fire. I was aiming here, so it's shooting a little higher and to the left, and those were all three here in this area. Okay, go. Okay, so as we can see, it went through four. So devastated the first one, that's one, two, three, four, and it may have skewed off to the side because these were untouched. They just fell over. Okay guys, so the apocalypse is upon us. Remember, this is all in fun. So this is for the rapid target acquisition string, and we're gonna put the shockwave through its paces. So let me go through our star cast lineup of pickets. That's the Chupacabra, that's the Werewolf, Mothman, Flatswitch Monster, Hopkins Goblin, and another one. So let's see how this goes, guys. Okay, so here I'm going to top it off with the, the mini shot shells from Aguila. And these are going to be eight plus one in the chamber, but I'm not going to put the one in the chamber. So we're going to top it off with eight. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now it's topped off. I will not chamber any in the round. So we're gonna go like this to the field so it'll be safe and secured.
Okay, so last time we didn't get the Mothman, so we're gonna see, and I'm gonna adjust my sight picture, and then we have a hard barrier right there, okay? So we have the Mossberg here and the mini slugs, so we're gonna see how we do. tore into the mothman so yeah i have to change my side picture and it's right on okay and this is the cinder block and actually this is very heavy so it hit just here and it went through the first side and it knocked off the second side here as we can see right here so let me see i think that's a remnant of the actual uh, round there. That's a slug. Let's see if we see anything here. Yep. Oh, and it basically fell apart. So we know that for hard barriers, a good old fashioned slug is hard to beat. Yep. And I don't see the slug anywhere. So I guess that's it. Covered the two liter bottle and I changed my side picture so instead of using the rib at an incline and then uh, looking at the beat side I tilted it downward so all I could see was the beat side so it's actually a little low where it's supposed to be that was a dead center of the shot so this was the entrance and that was the exit so it was perfect and it hit Mothman dead center that's what's left. And as always, guys, I pick up my trash.